Mark from Vortec Pro. This is part three of our 454 budget pump gas 620 horsepower build. Today we're going to talk about the cylinder heads. First I want to thank everybody that liked and subscribed to our video. We appreciate it. What we have here is three Ovalport Big Block Chevy heads. 781, 049, and another 781. These are the only two castings that I would use on a build like this. Uh, just because I know that they deliver. So what we're going to do is show you what to look for when you're buying cores, what to look for when you have cores. There's a lot, there's a lot to take in here. So we'll start off first. 781 head is 70, 1973, 74, 75, 76, and 77. That's when they were cast. The 73 and 74 head is your best bet. It's generally the best casting, but not always. The 049 head, 1972 and 73. Now they did have some later in the 70s, but they were used on boats. You want to avoid those at all cost because they're going to have a lot of corrosion in them. So for our build, we're going to use a 781 head. First thing, obviously, is you want a virgin head if you can get it. None of these are virgin. They've all been had work done to them, and they're pretty screwed up. And uh, that's one of the reasons we wanted to show them to you, so you know what not, not to look for. But we'll also tell you what to look for. First, this head. Can you get in there? This head has a lot of rust. You can see the rust pits here and here as compared to here where there is none. This head will need seats on the intake and exhaust to be usable. Uh, it's a really rough head. We probably put this in the stack to sell on Craigslist. Uh, the guides haven't been done, which is a big plus. Nobody's, nobody's knurled them, put guide liner enters in them, or you know, half inch knock in guides. So it, the head's good that way. But the seats are really sunk, and it, it wouldn't be a good head to start with. Now, what I want to show you is 73 and 74. And we'll, we'll use this 049 as an example. This is a 72 049. So the 72 and 73 049 have a deeper spring pocket on the intake pocket. You can see there's a lip right there. 73 and 74 781 head has that same deeper intake spring pocket. Which gives you more more installed height, you know, when you're using bigger cams. So it's kind of important. So you can tell by this lip right here. So 73 and 74 781s have this this deeper valve pocket, as with an all the 049s do. Unless you get into a later 70s 049, which is a boat head, and it would it would have the higher spring pocket. And you can compare it to this head. This is a 76 781, and you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this spring pocket is not as deep as this one. So, if you end up with a, with a 75, 76, 77 head, you can cut the intake spring pocket about 70 thousandths on these safely, if you need to do it. And you can see that this head, somebody's knurled the valve guides. You know, you can still use that with a K-line, you know, if they didn't get too crazy. But it's best to start with this. And generally, I mean, start with it, these, these virgin guides where you can put, put a K-line in them and get them right. Uh, this is iffy. You might, on a head like this, if we were going to use this head, we would probably put in all new knock-in guides and put a liner inside those. Okay, 
And uh, when we say talk, talking about a K-line, K-liner, what we mean is we'll put a bronze K-line in there, and then we'll broach it to size, and we'll hone it to final size. But we'll get into that later when we're uh, machining the heads and show you exactly how we do that. There's a lot to that, really, to get it, to get the guide right, so we can get a really nice valve job on it. Uh, this head, the next thing we're going to look at when you're going to going to look at heads to buy, or you know, if you have heads, is the core shift. This is your best friend when you're going to buy GM mobile port heads. You always take this with you. The first thing we're going to do is look at the core shift. And we're going to do it with this. Okay, I'm going to show you roughly where we got the head sitting up like in this position. Roughly what the difference is in the valve pocket heights. Uh, it was brought to my attention that I should redo this and make it a little more clear. Although this isn't really the way to do it but it'll give you an idea. If we put it, bring this down here like this, the valve, there's about 10 thousandths difference from the casting of the valve pocket. If we come over here to this 049 head, which will be the same as the 73 and 74, 781, it's about 105 thousandths. So roughly, you know, there's about a hundred thousandths difference between the sp spring pocket heights between a 73, a 72, 73, and 74 head compared to a 75 head on up. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate to you what I'm talking about on core shift. There's different angles of core shift on these heads. It's going to be very hard for me to completely articulate it the way it needs to be done, but I'll do my best. Do you see this right here? You see how the gaskets lined up with the bolt holes? Typical brown box Velpro oval port intake gasket. Do you see how far the gasket's hanging past that port? There and there. As the head goes this way, there's less shift. As it as the as the port goes this way. There's more core shift as you get down to this side of the head. Now, the head can also shift like this. Let's say this is the floor of the port, obviously, right? It can be like this, too. Your short turns can actually be higher on one end than they are on the other end. They could be like this. I'm exaggerating it. But what I'm talking about is the floor of the port could have a tilt in it. All these things or a problem. You don't want to start your project with heads like this because this head with this kind of core shift you'll have literally ten times the labor in trying to make this head work if if you can make it work. It might not work. These heads are not all created equal. Some molds were better than others. Again, the 73, 74, 049 I mean, excuse me, the 73, 74, 781 is a good, usually a good casting, but they can be bad too. The 72, 73, 049 is a good casting also. The thing is with the 049 is you're dealing with a, CC, a combustion chamber that's about two cc's bigger than a 781. We like to use the 049 on the 496s because it helps us keep the compression down after the head's finished. So back to the core shift. You can have core shift this way, this way, or this way. None that you want. So you always take your gasket with you when you go to buy heads. So now we're going to show you a head that's desirable, what you do want. Okay, what we have here is a Virgin 1974-781 casting. This casting is what I would consider to be pristine. Look at the alignment on the ports. You can see how aligned all the ports are on this head. As you can see all the alignment. There's no weird shape to the port. This head will this head will 
deliver and it will deliver with a minimal amount of work. I mean, it's always a lot of work on these heads, but this one will come in quick and it won't fight you. Very, very important when you're building a motor with this type of head and if you're trying to make power with it. This is the head to use. This is what we're looking for. Okay, I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. The floor of this port right here would be called the short turn. I'm looking at the thickness from the peak of the short turn down to the seat, valve seat, which roughly I'd say is 5 16 of an inch from here to here. I know from experience that height of that short turn on the exhaust, that's an exhaust that will flow. That's a good height. But when we're talking about the core shift, when I was talking about the shift being like this or like this on the floor of the ports, which would be the short turn, the distance from this, from the number, from this first hole is the same as it is down here at the bottom as far as the peak of the short turn to the valve seat. They're all basically the same. If this head had core shift, the short turn would be thicker up here would be taller and this one would be shorter. So this is a very very good head and again you can see this is all the factory valve job. No one's ever got in here and had their hands in this head. The guides are pristine, virgin. This is something that you can really do something with. And again let me show you the valve pockets. Since it's a 1974 781 head has a deep valve pockets. 75 on newer has a shallower valve pockets which you will have to cut to get any kind of installed height on your valve setup. Now the reason we use a 781 and 049 style head is because you can get the exhaust port to flow. I've tried using, I've messed with closed chamber heads and I've never been able to get the exhaust to move the air that I wanted it to in comparison to like a 781 or an 049. The 049 exhaust port's better than the 781 exhaust port. The chamber's a little bit different. Let me show you what I'm talking about. With this head, it's, it's, when you're building an engine like this, you always start with the cylinder heads. You build your heads first. You get the heads the way you want them. You get them flowing the way you want them to flow. You get your chamber volume set and your heads are done. They're done, ready to bolt on the motor. Then you build the rest of the motor around the heads. I've built this motor several times so I don't need to build the heads first because I know what I'm looking for on the head and I know what I'm going to get when I finish. So it's very important, again, remember, you don't want to surface the head any more than what it takes to even up the cc's from this head to the mate that goes with it. Because it will affect the, the airflow. The more you surface the head, it hurts the airflow. The power potential of this head right here is pretty good. I mean, it, it can make a tremendous amount of power, much more than 620 horsepower when it's done correctly. Okay, I'll show you the difference between the combustion chamber on an 049. You see this relief right here? Right here on the back side of the exhaust valve. Can you get in on the 781? If you look at the chamber on the 781, there's no back cut. There's no champ for right there. You can see it right there. It's just as cast. So this chamber runs usually about two cc's bigger than the 781 combustion chamber. We're going to use it. The reason we're using the 781 on our 620 horse 454 build is because compression is going to be an issue. We do not want to have to surface this head to get compression. 
we want to use the piston dome to set the compression height. So we don't want to give up a couple, couple cc's in the combustion chamber by using an 049. Now the exhaust port on an 049 head is a better exhaust port. The biggest flow numbers I've seen on an oval port GM head on the exhaust flow, air flow number, is from an 049 head. But we can get this 781 good enough on the, on the airflow. So I think the compression is more important than that airflow on the exhaust. So that's basically the differences between the two. The intake ports both respond about the same as far as airflow goes. Uh, again, this thing's a mess. This has just been through the mill, and this is virgin. So this is obviously what we want to start with. Uh, now, getting into why the exhaust flow is important because the camshaft we're going to use is a single pattern solid lifter cam. It's basically going to lift the valve to 560,000 lift. Being a single pattern cam, that means exhaust, the exhaust lobe is the same as the intake lobe it's important to get enough exhaust flow. And the reason we need the exhaust flow is very important. We have to rev the motor, be able to rev the motor in high gear. So we need an exhaust port that will allow the engine to carry the power past the peak. Let's say our motor makes 64, 64 6500 RPM peak horsepower. We don't want the thing to drop 50 horsepower at 6700 RPM. We want the least amount of drop above 7,000 RPM as we can get. And this exhaust port and this exhaust port will get, it, get what we need done. Very important to carry the power past peak. That's why we don't use a closed chamber head. We also don't use a closed chamber head because we can't get our mall piston dome into that closed chamber head and we use mall pistons. They make excellent power for the for the money spent. They're light, they're durable, they always deliver. So basically, I think that about covers it on the heads. If you have any questions, please leave them on the comments and we'll be happy to answer them.